Hello and welcome. I'm Heather McLean and this is the Alliance Against Northern Pass. Today I'm going to be introducing Jack Savage from the New Hampshire Forest Society. And we're here today because the Northern Pass has claimed that they have a new route. And I think the public needs to know what that really means in real terms as opposed to what they say that it means. Am I right there, Jack? Uh, sure. They're trying to put their uh, best face on what they're proposing to do. I think there's some uh, truth to that. Yeah. So there's a PR version of what they're doing. It, in essence, it looks a little bit like a desperate move to me. Well, I don't know whether I would uh, call it desperate. I can understand why you might say that. Um, but they have said for a long time they've needed to uh, draw a line on a map so that they could take the next step and, and, and uh, restart their presidential permit uh, process. And uh, I think they long hoped that they would uh, have uh, locked up all the permissions they needed before they did that. And, uh, of course, we blocked them from doing that. And so now they've drawn a line on a map uh, in order to go ahead and put that forward. And do it. they're doing the best um, they can in order to suggest the line they've drawn on the map is uh, uh, plausible and viable. Okay. So this line that they've drawn on the map, the towns that it's going through, did anybody in those towns know that this line was drawn up before they announced well, it? Well, I'm not sure that I can know whether anybody in town uh, knew it or not, but it, it, from the press coverage it would appear that um, uh, they have not done extensive uh, communication with uh, the local communities or with the State Department of Transportation. One of the things uh, uh, about the line, and I take this as actually good news, is that um, they're, what they're proposing to do is bury a short por a portion of the line uh, along Route 3 uh, in right near the Pittsburgh-Clarksville line okay. uh, that would uh, also presumably go underneath the Connecticut River. Um, and then another seven and a half um, uh, mile portion of the, mine, uh, of the line, proposed line, um, from uh, Route 145, right near the Clarksville uh, uh, Stewartstown line, uh, and then down along uh, Old County Road and North Hill Road to Bear Rock Road, and proceeding east uh, over towards uh, um, uh, over toward Dix Dixville. And so they're now prepared. Although they have for uh, years, uh, two and a half years now, said that it was simply not possible nor affordable to bury any portion of the line. The good news here, I really do think it's good news, is that they've, um, <laughs> they've at long last discovered the shovel and um, uh, have uh, figured out how they can bury a portion of the line. The trick for those of us who see the detrimental effects of overheading these lines uh, is to um, make it clear that if you can bury eight miles of the line, you can bury 180. And uh, I think that's ultimately um, where public opinion will lead them. Okay. Now, this uh, line burial, is it guaranteed that they're going to bury it for that full eight-mile route? I read somewhere that they're maybe going to bury portions. Well, uh, that may be semantics. Um, as I mentioned, um, based on uh, what they said at their um, press conference last week, um, there's a uh, slightly less than half mile section on Route 3 and then a seven and a half mile section uh, in Stewartstown um, along the roads that I mentioned. Uh, so presumably it would come back up over ground before and after those short sections. Okay, now are there problems with that route that they're trying to bury the line along? Um, well, I don't know to what extent there are problems, but there's, it would appear that uh, certainly at this stage um, they haven't done extensive work to know absolutely that they'll be able to get the rights to um, bury those lines on those particular spots. And we're certainly looking into that. Um, but I look at it in terms of um, uh, good news in the sense that uh, from the Forest Society standpoint, our objective um, has always been to compel them to look at, at um, other viable ways to do this um, compared to overheading uh, these lines. Um, we, don't, we have not taken a position on the um, relative good and evil of, of importing more of uh, the large-scale hydro from Canada to southern New England. Um, from our standpoint, it's always been about the means, and we've, all, we've said 
um, from early on that it was about, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, more than 1,100 towers built across 180 miles in New Hampshire's landscape. Um, and so we see this, this uh, fairly significant concession uh, to begin bearing it um, as a, a, a baby step in the right direction. The problem is they're still talking about um, proposing more than a thousand towers um, over 175 or 180 miles of New Hampshire, including the White Mountain National Forest. Um, and that's something we think is, uh, should not be allowed. It's mm -hmm. not in New Hampshire's best interest. Uh, in fact, it's bad for New Hampshire. Right. Um, I think many, many people, not just in New Hampshire, but around the state, uh, agree with us on that. And, uh, and so we will uh, be continuing to uh, campaign and, and, and looking for ways to compel them and require them to bury it um, far more. Uh, it was very heartening to see that certain um, uh, uh, key political people um, uh, were pushing them in exactly that direction. Mm -hmm. I think the, the uh, governor, through her statement, is making it clear that um, uh, she still has a great deal of concern over uh, the extent to which this, based on their most recent proposal, would still be overground. And, uh, and that's why I continue to believe that um, when push comes to shove, if this line is built, uh, far more of it will be underground. And that probably means moving it off their so-called existing uh, right-of-way and looking at uh, transportation corridors. Um, or there are other options as well. I look at the offer for them to bury it is, is interesting and I do think I see it as a baby step forward but at the same time if that happens it's kind of throwing the rest of New Hampshire under the bus as you said with these miles and miles of other towers. You know one of the interesting things is that, that um, there, are, there are those who have tried to characterize the opposition in Northern Pass as primarily a Northern New Hampshire. Uh, issue and we know at the Forest Society that that's far from true. That mm -hmm. in fact um, there are more people uh, south of the White Mountains who oppose Northern Pass have proposed for the simple fact that there are more people south of the, of the White Mountains and there are more people affected. Uh, in Deerfield, um, as you may recall, Heather, uh, back in March they they took a vote uh, to require all future uh, transmission lines to be buried. Now I don't know what to what extent that that. Uh, um, a, a local requirement like that um, would carry weight um, on a, a project that has to be permitted by the FCC, SEC, but it's clearly a, uh, a statement of where the uh, people in Deerfield stand and how they feel about this. Mm -hmm. And that's why um, uh, we would point to that and presumably the point, people of of Deerfield would point to this latest proposal and say, well, that's just not good enough. They're not going to get it done. Um, and uh, that's why I think the weight of public opinion will move them in the direction of acknowledging themselves that they're going to have to bury um, pretty much all of this thing. It would be, it would be good. Uh, the question I want to go back to for a moment is this issue of the headwaters that they're not going to try to go right. in but there's still this portion of the Connecticut River that they would go under? Right. And, so, they, and the issue to me would be, is that really legal? Um, I'm not sure I can comment uh, as to its legality, but clearly there will be some impacts on the landscape there, on the, on the actual ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's one of the things that we and others are starting to look at. What, what uh, kind of impacts might those be? Uh, presumably the EIS, uh, the Environmental Impact State Study that, that um, uh, will be conducted as part of the presidential permitting process and will uh, subsequently inform the special use, uh, the re request for a special use permit and, and the site evaluation uh, uh, committee process. Um, we'll take a look at that um, and understand um, uh, to what extent it will have a negative impact on the Connecticut River and uh, to what extent um, uh, heat might uh, impact uh, anything underground and, and so forth. I don't know the particulars, um, but it's a good question, uh, and I think it will have to be addressed in, in, in one form or another. Okay, and so then there's also the issue that they've just, as we said, dr drawn a line down the map through, is it Clarksville and Stewartstown? That's right, right yeah. Okay, and 
they want to go along these country roads yeah, or these that's roads fair, fair. Uh, that that are actually could be public land again, right? So the well, town, right, yeah, right. I know it's confusing. Yeah. The roads are very very complicated uh, legally. Uh, there, there are roads to which the state has uh, certain rights, there are roads the town has cer uh, certain rights, there are private roads. A single road may have um, uh, stretches that are uh, state or town or private along a single stretch. And so it's really very difficult to generalize. Um, okay. Suffice it to say that we're taking a closer look at um, the roads along which they propose to bury. And I think based on um, uh, what we've um, heard from uh, the local communities where these roads exist, um, that not all of the research uh, has been done by Northern Pass itself to understand that they absolutely have um, a clear authority to bury anything uh, underneath them. I think that remains to be seen. But look, I, I think they've done what I personally have expected them to do for a long time. They needed to um, uh, put their application before um, the Department of Energy. In order to do that, they needed to draw a line on a map. They've drawn a line on the map, and now they'll go forward. Um, whether or not that uh, line is ultimately viable uh, still remains to be seen. Okay, so I know they make it always sound very positive from a PR spin. Oh, this line is going to be operational sometime in 2017. So they make the general public the first thing you think of is, wow, they've they've really gotten a route and they're just going to do this thing no matter what we do. And it almost makes you want to kind of resign yourself. As uh, I'm just talking about how the PR thing might work. Sure. I don't believe that but, myself. But that's 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 the goal of the presentation. Correct. Isn't it? And, and they have, um, from day one, uh, attempted to create an aura of, aura of inevitability over right. the Northern Pass. Look, they were saying the exact same things uh, two and a half years ago when they uh, drew a line on the map yeah. and submitted an application to the DOE. And, um, and uh, they have not been able to pursue that uh, particular route uh, uh, over those two and a half year period. They've repeatedly delayed. So this is a new line on the map. So I wouldn't take that as uh, inevitable in any way, uh, shape, or form. Okay. Um, rather, I would I choose to look at it this way: they have, for the first time, acknowledged that they can bury line along transportation corridors, right? <laughs> yeah. And Ooh. and from the forty, well, well, look, this is this is all a it's process. True. This is all it's a process. True. And 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 I represent the Forest Society's point of view. And from the Forest Society's point of view, we have not objected to Northern Pass in concept, mm -hmm. only the means by which they propose to um, build this line. M more than 1,100 towers across uh, uh, 180 miles of landscape for a project that that would appear to have no real benefits for the state of New Hampshire. This is primarily uh, designed to benefit Northeast Utilities, Hydro Quebec, and and the states of, in Southern New England. And so, um, uh, what we're, uh, and so what we're seeing now is, is an acknowledgement that they can bury. Mm -hmm. When they need to, they can bury it. And um, so rather than um, uh, focusing on whether or not they're being uh, uh, completely open and, and the kind of spin they're putting on it, I choose to look at the fact that they have made a huge concession, mm -hmm. and the goal now for the people in New Hampshire who care about our landscape and don't want to see more than a thousand towers uh, 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 through the White Mountains, through our Rocks Estate, through our Kaufman Forest, um, through uh, uh, two and a half dozen other conserved parcels uh, coming down through Franklin and Concord and over to Deerfield, um, is to um, push them towards doing in every other town what they say they're going to do in Stewartstown. Mm -hmm. Think of Concord, for example. In, in Concord, the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board have indicated they don't uh, support Northern Pass as proposed. So here, these, are the, these are the entities who are looking far forward um, uh, for what uh, they want and they, what, what they think the population of Concord wants Concord to be in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. Mm -hmm. And what they don't want it to be be is a place where that it has giant um, 
high voltage transmission lines passing through it at the gateways to the city across 93, across 393. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of thing you, you're seeing down in Bedford, and, and it, it's not attractive in the least. And, oh, it's terrible. And, and so, um, and, and the line they propose to use already has three lines on it. I mean, this is really industrializing um, okay. the Concord landscape. Yeah. And so, um, if you're a citizen of Concord, and you don't uh, uh, like the prospect of overhead lines, they're going to do nothing for you whatsoever. They're not going to benefit you, you in the least. They're going to help, and you make money, and how do you go back and make money, and, and, and uh, the people of Connecticut nominally feel good about uh, using a large-scale hydropower, then um, what you want to say to um, a Northern Pass is say, look, if you're going to go through our town, you've got to go underground. And I think there's going to be the forum for saying that, and I think that um, in the end, the weight of that public opinion will... Uh, cause the decision makers uh, throughout the state to make sure that that's the way it happens, if it ever happens. I hope more people do exactly as you said and voice their opinion. And for example, Concord, according to the AMC, is one of the is going to be the most visually impacted. With yeah, these that's towers. correct. Yeah, yeah. If if it, if it's built overhead. Yeah. Um, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah. I, I think you got to look at, at where we stand today versus where, where uh, this project was in, in October of 2010. In October of 2010, uh, Governor Lynch, Lynch stood with PSNH and Franklin to announce this project, right? And said, yeah, we ought to do this. This, this could be a good thing. And, and now we have, um, and, and over the course of time, Governor Lynch, I think um, it's fair to say, came to realize, A, that public opinion was that, that they didn't want, uh, you know, 135 foot towers. Um, uh, creating a giant sort of zippered landscape down this. Uh, I'd uh, say he got that know. loud and clear. Um, what? Well, <laughs> he didn't say much, though. Well, I think he um, tried his best to make it clear to the project developers that they needed to work with the local communities, and so. That's um, such a diffuse statement. I'm sorry. I I didn't stand well with me. That well, was kind of like whispering into the wind. I, uh, uh, I, appreciate I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I think you. Uh, uh, I would. Uh, I would look at, at uh, the extent to which Governor Lynch moved from one position to another. Right. He he was listening to the people, his constituents, and he was encouraging the project developers to do the same. And it was pretty clear that the project developers were not doing the same. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that um, people would be comfortable with a transmission line under a transportation corridor um, in Stewartstown, I think other communities along the route are going to want the same. And today we have a governor who's indicating that uh, she would be a lot more comfortable if more of this line was buried. To the extent we have uh, state senators and other political leaders saying, geez, this thing uh, uh, could be a go if it didn't have the negative impacts of being overheaded with uh, such uh, uh, high towers. I think we need to take a look at that as a huge advance uh, on the side of, of beautiful, scenic, uh, non-industrialized New Hampshire. Um, that, that we should not subsidize um, a Connecticut-based transmission line right. by the degradation of New Hampshire's landscape. Have Connecticut paid for the burial? Well, and, and, and as a, they and, want it so bad, they can fact, pay for the line. Well, in fact, it may ultimately be uh, something of a, a benefit that Connecticut is looking at um, uh, qualifying hydropower and the renewal of oil standards. I know, standards. I saw and it. And to the extent that that would subsidize it and subsidize this project, in the end, that might be um, something that, that, in fact, has some uh, benefits in the You hand. think? You think they would actually bury it at that point, or would they Look, then they, try to put the screws and say it's too expensive I, because we're subsidized? Well, that would, at least they would have the choice. You know, I, um, I think it will be very interesting uh, to the extent, um, you know, some number of years from now, a project is before, put forward before the SEC, um, and the SEC um, might turn to the project developers and say, look, you can have a, trans uh, a, a transmission line from point A to point B through New Hampshire. But if you're going to do it, it has to be buried. And here's where it could be buried. Um, but you're not going to do it overhead. Imagine you have that situation um, in which the project developer now has a choice. 
They've said, they've said it was too expensive, but they have the go-ahead to do it underground. I'm going to bet they're going to go underground and they're going to do it. There is so much money over such a long period of time exactly. that the capital costs um, are, are well within it. I say that yeah. not because I'm an expert, because I look at what's happening in Vermont and New York, or I look at what's being proposed in Maine, and uh, suggest that um, over time um, we do not have to sacrifice New Hampshire's landscape in order to provide the people of Connecticut uh, power. I absolutely agree. The, I don't think people understand that sometimes that if it goes up a billion dollars they're still making at least 40 plus billion dollars over a certain amount of time, like say 20 or 40 years. Yeah, I mean, that's, and that, that's the key thing is that, that this is a very long-term project and... Um, yeah, if they have to pay an extra billion to bury the line, that's what they should do. Um, certainly, um, uh, I think it's fair to say that New Hampshire's landscape should not be paying the cost instead of NU and Hydro-Quebec. Right. Okay. Uh, and on that note, um, I think we're I think we're pretty good unless there's anything else you want to bring up because I think we're close to the end of our time slot. Well, um, I would uh, encourage people to uh, contact the Forest Society if you have other, other questions. Um, we're we're going to continue to be looking into the specifics of the new route proposal. They've also proposed to reduce the uh, tower heights in some uh, a few uh, more places. And look, I think it it's fair to take a closer look at that uh, to the extent that there are people object to the Northern Pass for many different reasons. Um, one of those reasons is scenic impact um, based on the height of towers. And the Forest Society has pointed out that that their uh, proposal is to put towers at a height greater than the uh, typical uh, tree line. And so um, I, I think it's uh, incumbent upon us to take a, a look at their proposal and understand um, what their, um, how they might do this and, and, and to what extent there might be places where lower tower heights are, um, uh, can help mitigate this. That said, a quick look suggests that um, you've still got some massively high towers, especially in southern New Hampshire, that, that are uh, going to industrialize a landscape that is now seen yes. as country and, uh, and that, that it won't be good enough. Um, yeah, it, it, the bottom line, even if they're 85 feet, they're ugly, <laughs> okay? And they do not fit in with the landscape. And that's, that's the bottom line in my book. Right. You can give them some kudos. I'm not. <laughs> Okay, I just think they're ugly. Um, and I know what I was going to ask you too, it was about the DOT. They claim that they have spoken to the DOT about all this. Well that's very interesting, isn't it, that uh, they made some fairly strong statements, it, it sounds like, um, uh, and, and suggesting that they would had ongoing conversations with the Department, State Department of Transportation about the use of certain mm -hmm. rights of ways, presumably regarding Route 3 and and maybe 145 and uh, some of the smaller roads. And uh, the DOT, when asked by reporters, was pretty quick to refute that. Um, that, that okay. at, at the very least, it was a mischaracterization of the nature of, the, of any communication that occurred between those two entities. Um, I wasn't there. I don't know what that's about, but um, uh, that tells me um, that um, they, uh, this is more about drawing a line on a map and helping Wall Street and Canada feel like they're making pros, uh, progress than it is about um, having any made any um, done any real uh, serious research on the line that they've fact drawn on the map. Okay, well that says it all for me. I, if you, uh, actually, if you guys want to uh, get more information or follow the Forest Society and their coverage on this issue, you tell them where to go. Yeah, the best way to do is go to our website at, at uh, www.forestsociety.org. I would encourage you to sign up for our e-newsletter, which we send out uh, once or twice a month, and that typically has an update on uh, Northern Pass and, and uh, what we're doing to affect a better outcome. And, uh, and also tells you a little bit about other projects uh, we got going on. Can I, can I give a plug for uh, another project we're working on? Sure. sure. So we just announced last week, while, while PSNH and, and Northeast Utilities and Hydro Quebec were busy through Northern Pass trying to desecrate New Hampshire's landscape, mm -hmm. we were busy trying to protect uh, an, another iconic place. And many of your viewers, I'm sure, will know Mount Major. It's 
It's one of my favorite first hikes in all of New Hampshire, and we think it rivals Mount Monadnock in terms of the number of people who climb it every year. It's in Alton. It's right on uh, the trailhead. It's right on Route 11, and uh, it's a fairly uh, short climb, half hour, 45 minutes, to uh, just a world-class view of Lake Winnipesaukee and, and the Belknap Mountains. And we're partnering with the Lakes Region Conservation Trust to um, uh, try to acquire 950 acres uh, on uh, partly at the top, and partly on the slopes of Mount Major and another uh, section in what's known as the Molten Valley uh, in Guilford. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, four parcels, 950 acres. Uh, we have signed purchase and sale agreements with four landowners. Uh, we need to raise $1.8 million, and so we're going to be working hard at that over the next six months or so. We have a December 1 deadline in order to raise that money. And, um, uh, and, and uh, the key thing about that is Many, of all the people who hike it, most people are not aware that between the trailhead, which is uh, owned by the Department of Transportation, and the top of Mount Major, which is owned, um, which is a state forest, um, it's all private land in between. Okay. And so some of these parcels oh. um, are, are land on which yeah. the existing trail passes. It's not, it's not everything, but it's a first step towards uh, ensuring ongoing public access. And I can't tell you how important that is because there are generations of people yeah. who have, have uh, hiked this mountain. And you'll hear people talk about, uh, people my age talking about remembering when they were six or seven or eight years old and finally being per uh, given uh, permission to go along on their first hike mm -hmm. uh, on Mount Major. That was a seminal moment in their uh, life growing up in New Hampshire or southern Maine or northern Massachusetts. They got to go with the family for the annual hike to Mount Major. And, and so this is a, a longer tradition. We want to make sure it stays a tradition. And I encourage people to go to our website and check out that project as well. Well, thanks. Thank you, Jack. And I encourage people to donate to the Forest Society because I think you guys have done more to at least stall this project and to, and as you said, to implore them to bury the project. So there's been some real progress here and we appreciate all that you've done. Alright, thanks very much. Thank you.